Professor Poon, first of all, it's a great privilege and happiness to see you after such a long time. Uh, you are very valuable to me personally because not only you are a great scholar, but also you have been a mentor of uh, two of my great friends with whom we are working together. And I believe that we are working productively. One is Professor Ramkrishna Pradhan, who is teaching in uh, Guru Gazidas University Central in Central University. Yeah. Second one is Hamid Rasul, Hamid Vani, who is now teaching at Gautam Buddha University. And I still remember them from very young. And I remember you when you just uh, came out uh, with uh, your monograph on Central Asia. So if I'm not mistaken, it has been 16 years, maybe now, 16, 15 years. In 2001. Yeah, that book was published in 2001, mm -hmm. but uh, we met in 2009, end of 2009, yeah, yeah. 14 years, yeah. yeah. Still, it's a, it's a time, it's a, it's a life of a person. Uh, and one important thing, Professor, is that uh, you started exploring Central Asia where almost no one did it. Of course, we had a list of great Sovietologists. We know them. Uh, but when we were talking about Sovietologists, we will name Shirin Akiner. She, she was uh, uh, based in London. We would name Gregory Glisson. And in India, uh, it was just starting. Before that, Professor Samsuti. Mm -hmm. Professor Samsuti. I didn't meet him, unfortunately. Yeah. He was he's my group. There was Russian studies, but Central Asian studies. So what brought you? What brought you, Professor, to uh, what brought your focus to Central Asia? Can you? Okay. Actually, when I joined JNE as a student in the year of 1990, in the School of International History as an MA student. So we will have to do 10 compulsory courses and 6 optional courses. So out of 6 optional courses, basically at that time the name of this center was Center for Soviet and East European Studies. So from the Soviet and East European studies, I opted two courses as an optional during my MA days. One course was Government and Politics in Central Asia. Another was Government and Politics in Eastern Europe. But uh, when I opted uh, Government and Politics in Central Asia at MA level, then uh, and uh, this course was started by Professor Samsuti who later on during my research period became my supervisor. So he was your supervisor? He was my supervisor. So I found this course very interesting. Whether it was, in, uh, if you, I look at the um, society level, so nomadic society, sedentary society, before that I was not knowing nomadic society, sedentary society, first I came to know that there are such type of division in the society, number one. Number two, though I had uh, studied somewhere in the history that uh, uh, Changej Khan came from Central Asia, even before that uh, um, Aryan, Aryan people came to India from the Central Asia or via Central Asia, then Changi Khan, Taimur, Lang, Babur, so many people. So I found this area very interesting. Number two, society level, government level. Then I thought I should join this center. 
and I had uh, some interest in Soviet Union also. So I should uh, I should explore this area. So I took admission in this center, and then I decided to work on Central Asia. I contacted Professor Samsudin that uh, I would like to work on Central Asia. Then he said. Why you want to work on Central Asia? Nobody is interested in this region. Then why you are interested? Then I said, uh, no sir, I am interested and work on Central Asia. And this was 1990? Nin this is 1992. 92. Well, we already got our sovereignty. Uh, yes. So, he said, okay, no problem. Then I said, sir, I want to work with you. Okay, we'll see later on. And then finally, I got registered under him. Then I started. But uh, there was a lot many problems. Lot many problems. At my MPhil level, I uh, wrote dissertation on Russian culture and influence on Central Asia. So basically, it was a Russian cultural policy or religious policy. So I didn't find any or uh, more difficulty while uh, writing dissertation, but I faced lot many difficulty when I was writing my thesis. There was a scarcity of materials. So I said to my teacher that there is no book. There is no art kills. I am facing a lot many problems. So he laughed at me and said, if there is a book, then what is, what would be your research? Uh -huh. My dear, you write your book. Then I thought inside my heart that I will write. But I didn't tell him that would be impolite if i will tell you okay i will write then it would be impolite but uh, inside my heart or inside my mind i thought definitely sir i will write and then i started working in a different way and luckily i got one month <coughs> field trip Basically, frankly speaking, I wanted to go to London mm -hmm. to collect material. But at the same time, I wanted to go to Central Asia also. Both. I wanted to go both London and Central Asia. London for library consultation and Central Asia for field observation. But tell me, so you were able to get material on Central Asia from uh, uh, libraries in, the, in Great Britain? In London? Historical background, I think. A historical background. Yes, historical, huh. historical, for historical background, I can get. Because at that time, I tell you one thing. We were, uh, as there was a certain policy run by Soviet Union and by, uh, by Russia, we were ourselves very limited on the documents. Like the first uh, delegation have been sent to China, to Iran at the uh, beginning at mi and mid 1990s and they shared their archives on our history which we didn't have at that time no basically in uh, university of london there was a leonard sapiro mm -hmm. sapiro yeah uh, professor leonard sapiro who has worked on uh, soviet union right. and so sovietologist i thought huh, i thought ki i will get material there so I applied for field trip to go London and Central Asia, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh, selection committee approved for Central Asia and Tashkent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can go uh, fund. There was a scarcity of fund, so I was not allowed to visit all the Central Asian country. So I was allowed to visit Tashkent, Uzbekistan. And basically at that time, nobody was interested to go to Central Asia. Nobody was uh, interested to work on or do PhD on Central Asia 
or visit to Central Asia. And when I was going, before that, uh, when Soviet Union, Soviet system collapsed, Soviet Union disintegrated in India, academia, basically in academia, in our center also, people were saying that, oh, Islamic fundamentalism is taking place, people are becoming Islamic, fundamentalist, this and that, region in, engulfed by the Islam and Islamic radicalism, Islamic fundamentalist people, all these things. So when I was going to Central Asia, uh, before one day, uh, 29th September 1998, I had my flight. So before one day, 28th September 1998, I met my supervisor and I, we had discussions and then finally I said that, sir, I am going to Tashkent. So what kind of materials or what kind of things I have to collect? Then he said to me, you go there, if you get material. It's okay. If you do not get material, it's very good. Then I thought, ki, if I get material, it's okay. Otherwise, it's very good. So what he wants to convey to me? Then I thought, said that, sir, I didn't get your point. He said, you go and meet the people. Observe the society. And what is happening in the society? You come with that observation, and I will ask you. Don't mm, collect paper. Collect ideas. Observe the society. Then I went there. Though I faced a lot many problem because I didn't know the language in a proper way, and. Uh, that time it was not internet jamana <laughs> people didn't speak english uh, yes no one uh, no one english. no one no yeah, one yeah. in buses in metro very some uh, i found one or two people they were speaking some words of english not proper sentence so it was uh, too difficult for me but uh, somehow i reached uh, Oriental Studies, Tashkent State Institute of Oriental Studies. So yes, it was the best one. Huh. Mm -hmm. And there was a professor Ajat Samato. Uh -huh. He was a pro at that time he was a professor and uh, head of um, South Asian Language Department. And uh, he knew very well Hindi. I came to contact with him. So he helped me a lot. A lot. Fatherly treatment. He provided me accommodation, all these things. He used to take appointment with the professors, academicians, to whom I have to meet, to whom I have to interview. So I started roaming around the here and there, bazaar, villages outside Tashkan, nearby Tashkan, not very far. I went to uh, Samarkand also and I uh, started interacting with people with the help of one PhD scholar who was uh, speaking Hindi, Uzbek, Russian, all this. So he was uh, translating me in Hindi. He didn't know English, but uh, in Hindi, he was fluent. So, people were saying here that Islamic fundamentalism is taking place, but when I saw the society, I got it in a different way. I found that no, Islamic fundamentalism is not here. No. No. One episode uh, or incident I can tell you. I was sitting in the Department of South Asian Language uh, in, uh, Oriental Studies. 
when professor came old professor and uh, one two minutes she talked to me and then she said that i am going to class i said okay then he there was a mirror on the wall she stand stood on, before the mirror and he started kangha and make up all his thing then i smiled she looked at me then i is scared so i i committed some kind of mistake this should not be and she came to me she said you smiled then i got off it no i have committed not only wrong i have committed great wrong <laughs> and i will be in trouble so she said no 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 don't बूढ़ी हूँ इसी टेल मी इन हिंदी ओल्ड आई एम ओल्ड सो आई एम गोइंग अमंग यंग पीपल सो आई शुड लुक लाइक अ यंग दैट्स आई आई थॉट कि व्हाट काइंड ऑफ सोसाइटी इन इंडिया इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल नो नो आई थिंक इन जे एन यू जी में If you love that uh, professor like this, they will be offended. Come on, I'm always laughing into your face. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but uh, if uh, lady professor is uh, yeah. ma uh, making his face, her face, then you uh, and uh, suppose any student or any person laugh at her, then she. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, but it seems that uh, we take our students as our kids. We like laugh, laugh. A child, child can laugh and smile. Uh, no, but uh, yes, um, we also take uh, a student as a child, but not in this regard. <laughs> <laughs> look at Delden. Look at Delden. <laughs> so, so. I found I I traveled a lot many villages and uh, visited Samarkand, which is three hundred fifty kilometer from Tashkent. But I didn't find that Islamic red religion is taking place. And when I was comparing uh, Uzbekistan, which I have seen. With Central Asia, uh, with India, then I find that we are much more fundamentalist than them. So I came with this conclusion that we are fundamentalist, <laughs> we are communal, we are casteist, but they are progressive people, they are secular people. We are not. I came with this conclusion. Then after coming back to India, next day I. Went to my supervisor and uh, sit sat with them him. So after getting tea and all these things, then he started. Okay, I had said you that you come with observation. So what is your observation? Then I said that the sir people are saying that Islamic fundamentalism is taking place. But uh, I didn't find that society is so progressive, so li mm, secular, secular and progressive. Then he said, "Yeah, you have observed the society." And this year I have completed twenty-five years of my visit to Central Asia, and I have visited all the countries. Including Turkmenistan, which is very difficult to visit. Which I didn't visit as yet. But I have visited once. So, and uh, last month, in November, uh, not in October, I have gone to Uzbekistan, <laughs> Samarkand, Tashkent, uh, fifth time. Mm -hmm. in Uzbekistan 
I found different from 1998 to 2023. There are a lot many different, lot many different. There are a lot many development have taken place. I have visited thrice uh, Kazakhstan and uh, regularly I am finding difference. Whenever I went, I find different, particularly in terms of development. So development is taking place in all the countries, in whether it is Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. And I have visited once only uh, Turkmenistan, so I cannot say what difference is taking place. But one thing I have seen, New Askaba. The city which is fully constructed with Italian marble. Beautiful. Beautiful. And if uh, I have seen day and night both, Askaba, New Askaba, white Italian marble, and I came to conclusion about that city if there would be heaven, then I think like this. <laughs> Would you prefer to live in Ashgabat? No. No. <laughs> no. For two, three days or for a week, but not more than that. You cannot stay in heaven for more than <laughs> three, yeah, four yeah. days, right? Uh, basically, I don't believe in heaven. That's why. Huh? That's why. If you did, then you, you would say that, that I would prefer uh, to live in That's why I use the word if. <laughs> so, I find this society, Central Eastern society, is a very interesting society and uh, the people of the region like Indians very much, very much. When we go to the streets, Salaam Alaikum, Hindustan, then Raj Kapoor song, <laughs> eh? um, then Amtab Bachchan, Rekha, and Saru Khan, and Mithun, he, Mithun. Uh, Mithun Chakravarti, and others uh, actresses and uh, actors, which um, being an Indian, I don't know. <laughs> but um, Central Eastern people know. My, my students sing, Meshair to Nehi, Meshair to Nehi, Magar. Hey, hey, Hasin. What's that? Jab se deko, meri tushko, mushko. <laughs> See, the students know this. <laughs> so, this is uh, my journey to Central Asia, and I have completed 25 years. And I always think when I went to Central Asia, nobody was related to. No, but Professor, one more thing that we are not uh, telling now, and you are also hiding, uh, that you, I was telling to your students, that you prepared a school of students of Central Asia, students who later on became professionals in Central Asia. Yeah, uh, Ram, uh, Ram Krishna Pradhan, he, he did uh, his research on... Uh, uh, energy sector yeah. of Central Asia, yeah, which is incredibly important. SEO was done by Hamid Rasul. Yeah, now you have uh, very young and uh, bright students who who is doing uh, research on environmental issues. And my MPhil is in uh, social change in Uzbekistan. Ah, so you did MPhil on Central yes. Asia, and now you are doing your PhD. Uzbekistan. You, sh Uzbekistan. you should go to Uzbekistan. Yeah, Have you ever yeah. visited? No? no? No. You should go to Uzbekistan. Inshallah. So, Professor, uh, basically, I produced 36 PhD on Central Asia. On Central Asia. And 39 MPhil. And this year, I will complete 40. What kind of uh, governmental awards from Central Asian Republics you have? No. 
not yet. Center Christian government didn't give me any award. <laughs> they should. <laughs> they should. <laughs> this December I will complete 40 PhD Why? on Central Asia. This is a number. This big is number. a number. It's a big number. And uh, till my retirement, more than 50. I will. Don't get retired. <laughs> Why you should get retired? <laughs> we still need scholars on Central Asia. Those who understand, who but smells it. Retirement us. from the university, not from the academy. Yeah, don't, don't get. You know that uh, as long as you are producing something, you are young. Yeah. So, Professor, I wish you to be very productive, at Thank least for the you. coming next 50 years, <laughs> <laughs> and produce more scholars on Central Asia because we need it. And let us work together. Maybe Definitely. it will be useful for you. Uh, and I do have great respect for you. <laughs>